Good morning and welcome to our worship this Sunday. We're gathered from Eversley and Derby Green and probably from further afield as well to worship God in our own homes and our own communities. There are so many in those places and among us who can't yet have much in the way of freedom to meet with others. So it seems uh, a little too soon to try and gather together physically in worship. Uh, there are many restrictions in place that would uh, have to be overcome to make that possible even for some of us. So we continue to worship online and it is good to know that many find strength and encouragement and hope in the messages that we have been sharing week by week and day by day. So this morning as we turn to God in worship let us pray. Eternal God, maker of the skies above, lowly Christ, lover of the earth and its people, unfettered spirit, giver of gracious gifts, you are present among us. O hidden mystery, sun behind all suns, soul within all souls, in all we touch, in all we meet, you are present among us. As bearers of your image, we come before you this day to be reshaped. Dependent on your mercy, we ask to be made new today through the power of your living word and the hope of your resurrection. Gracious Father, by the obedience of Jesus, you brought salvation to our wayward world. Draw us into harmony with your will, that we may find all things renewed and restored in him. Our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. And so we sing our first song this morning, quite often sung on Palm Sunday, as its uh, words do resonate with that idea of Jesus coming into Jerusalem. But it's also an invitation to worship, to open ourselves to what Jesus wants to say in our lives this morning. Make way, make way for Christ the King. Long the joy and royal crown, he'll do to 
of opening ourselves for Jesus to make his way into our hearts and our lives is to listen to his words to us and so Margaret Manning and Tony Ford are going to read for us from scripture before Derek preaches for us. The reading is taken from Isaiah 59, verses 1 to 8. Surely the arm of the Lord is too short to save, nor his ear too dull to hear. But your iniquities have separated you from your God. Your sins have hidden his face from you, so that you will not hear. For your hands are stained with blood, your fingers with guilt. Your lips have spoken falsely, and your tongue mutters wicked things. No one calls for justice, no one pleads a case with integrity. They rely on empty arguments that utter lies. They conceive trouble and give birth to evil. They hatch the eggs of vipers and spin a spider's webs. Whoever eats their eggs will die, and when one is broken, the adder is hatched. Their cobwebs are useless for clothing. They cannot cover themselves with what they have made. Their deeds are evil, and acts of violence are in their hands. Their feet rush to, into sin. They are swift to shed innocent blood. They pursue evil schemes. Acts of violence marks their ways. The way of peace they do not know. There is no justice in their paths. They have turned them into crooked roads. No one who walks alone along with them will know peace. Reason is from the book of Ephesians, chapter 2, 1 to 10. Made alive in Christ. As for you, you were dead in your transgressions and sins in which you used to live when you followed the ways of this world and of the ruler of the kingdom of the air, the spirit who is now all at, at work in those who are disobedient. All of us who lived among them at one time, gratifying the cravings of our sinful nature and following its desires and thoughts. Like the rest, we were by nature objects of wrath. But because of his great love for us, God, who is rich in mercy, made us alive with Christ, even when we were dead in transgressions. It is by grace that you have, you have been saved, and God raised us up with Christ and seated us with him in the heavenly realms in Christ Jesus, in order that in the coming ages he might show the incomparable riches of his grace expressed in his kindness to us in Christ Jesus. For it is by grace you have been saved, through faith, and this not for, from yourselves, it is a gift of God, not by works, so that no one can boast. For we are God's workmanship, created in Christ Jesus to do good works, which God prepared for us in advance to do. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Good morning. At the end of chapter 1 of Ephesians, we are reminded of God's supreme and awesome power. The power that was able to raise Christ from death and seat him in the heavenly realms at God's right hand. Above all powers, dominions and every title that can be given. And God placed everything under his feet 
and appointed him head over everything, for the church which is his body, the fullness of him who fills everything in every way. Wow, can you begin to see what we're dealing with here? This is mind-blowing stuff, and this God has made a way to bring us back into relationship with him, through his Son, Jesus Christ. And there is nothing we have done to bring this about. In fact, Paul tells us exactly where we stood before Jesus made it possible for us to turn away from our sinful nature, the nature that we have been born into. Paul pulls no punches here. As for you, you were dead in your transgressions and sins. This is a stumbling block for many people who say they have never done anything really bad. And yes, I understand that. However, God is a holy God and anything that is in rebellion of him is a sin. The Israelites found this out as they tried to live by the Jewish law and failed. And Jesus comes along and raises the bar even higher, telling everyone that even to have bad thoughts about others is sin. Now tell me you have never had a bad thought about anyone in your life. You have never been jealous of anyone or wanted something that someone else has. Well, I'm afraid to tell you that this is sin. Psalm 51 verses 1 to 5 tell us, Have mercy on me, O God, according to your unfailing love, according to your great compassion, Blot out my transgressions, wash away all my iniquity, and cleanse me from my sin. For I know my transgressions and my sin are always before me. Against you and you alone have I sinned, and, and done what is evil in your sight. So you are right in your verdict, and justified when you judge. Surely I was sinful at birth. Sinful from the time my mother conceived me. And this is coming from King David. And he is called a man after God's own heart. What hope is there for us? Even Paul himself confesses in Romans 7 verses 15 to 20 in the message version. I know that all God's commands are spiritual, but I am not. Isn't this your experience? Yes, I'm full of myself after all. I've spent a long time in sin's prison. What I don't understand about myself is that I decide one way, but then I act another, doing things I absolutely despise. So if I can't be trusted to figure out what is best for myself and then do it, it becomes obvious that God's command is necessary. But I need something more, for if I know the law but still can't keep it, and if the power of sin within me keeps sabotaging my best intentions, I obviously need help. I realise that I don't have what it takes. I can will it, but I can't do it. I decide to do good, but I don't really do it. I decide not to do bad, but then I do it anyway. My decisions, such as they are, don't result in actions. Something has gone wrong deep within me and gets the better of me every time. It's not my fault, honest. I can't help myself. Well, that sounds like a cop-out, and it is. But it's true. We can't help ourselves. This is why we need Jesus to come and save us. Jesus has made reparation for all our wrongs, restoring us into a relationship with God. But there is one thing that we need to be able to do, and that is to admit that we are sinners in rebellion of God. It's our selfishness, our pride and our egos that separate us from God. Nonetheless, 
when we can admit our guilt to God and say sorry, then wow, he can take our pathetic lives and transform them into something worthwhile. Now to give an analogy, suppose we are led astray into committing a crime of some seriousness and it results in us getting caught. How are we going to feel? I think I will be terrified knowing the consequences of my actions would lead to my crime becoming known to my friends and family and the thought of going to prison. I would be so worried that I might pray to God and ask his forgiveness and promise to commit my life to him if he would only just take it all away. However, I would feel at the back of my mind that this would not be possible. I deserve my punishment. I've been such a fool. Surely this is not, he's not going to listen to me. But Isaiah 59 tells us, there is hope. Surely the arm of the Lord is not too short to save, not nor his ear too dull to hear. But your iniquities have separa separated you from God. Your sins have hidden his face from you, so that he will not hear. But he does listen, and he does work miracles. Remember, this is the God of supreme and awesome power that I spoke of at the beginning. When we confess our sin, he can work a miracle in your life, declaring you not guilty, when we know darn well that we are. How will you feel now? Elated? Ecstatic? I would think. And you will promise never to do anything like that, that again. You will be so relieved that you will want to do anything you can to repay that debt. Well, we are guilty sinners in rebellion of God. And the sooner we realise this, the better. Because we can pray to Jesus and he will forgive us and declare us not guilty. Because of his great love for us, God, who is rich in mercy, made us alive with Christ, even when we were dead in our transgression. It is by grace that we have been saved. And no, we can't repay him for what he has done, not in all eternity, but we can learn to love him and our neighbour. This is all that is required of us. And this is only because we have become aware of Christ's sacrifice, the pain and suffering, the constraints of being God in man and the separation from his Father. His willingness to go through this for us as he takes our sin and punishment upon himself. This must compel us to love and being accepting of his grace. How can we not love after he has so shown us such love? Knowing how much God loves us leads me to want to live my life by giving it away, choosing to come to the foot of the cross every day where Jesus has opened his arms as an invitation into the kingdom of God. The temple curtain has been torn from top to bottom, giving access to the Holy of Holies. My need is to come daily before Jesus, just as we all do. We can't do it without his help, because like Paul, I am too feeble in my own strength. But I long in my heart to know him more clearly, to love him more dearly, and to walk with him more nearly. For we are God's workmanship, created in Christ Jesus, to do good works, which God prepared in advance for us to do. Amen. As we reflect on Derek's words to us this morning, we ask in song for God's grace to be poured into our lives 
that we might know what it is that we need to confess before him this morning and receive his forgiveness. which we can make our confession and it's sometimes useful to use slightly different words that will um, bring us up short, give us a, perhaps a different focus and so this morning I've chosen liturgy that comes from the Iona community in Scotland and we use those to make our confession now. For the right roads we have avoided travelling, and the kindly words we have refused to share. For the false gods who have received our worship, and the true selves we have starved of love. 
God, by your grace, forgive us. For the hidden hurts we have held too tightly, for the promises which we have never kept, for the careless use of our time and money, and the lame excuses we should never have made. God, by your grace, forgive us. For all we should be and all we can amend, God, in your love, renew us. For all you have in store for us and all you may demand of us, God, in your love, prepare us. For the life of the world and the love of its people, God, in your love, commit us. Kyrie eleison. God, have mercy on us. Christe eleison. Christ, have mercy on us. Kyrie eleison. God, have mercy on us. Hear and believe these words of Jesus. Your sins are forgiven. Go in peace. Come and follow me. Glory to the Creator who gives us life. Glory to Jesus whose love remakes us. Glory to the Spirit, companion on our journey. Glory be to God. Amen. And so in response to the forgiveness that we receive in Christ's death and resurrection, let us affirm our faith together. We believe in God above us, maker and sustainer of life, of sun and moon, of water and earth, of male and female. We believe in God beside us, Jesus Christ, the Word made flesh, born of a woman, servant of the poor, tortured and nailed to a tree. A man of compassion, he died forsaken. He descended into the earth, to the place of death. On the third day he rose from the tomb. He ascended into heaven to be everywhere present and his kingdom will come on earth. We believe in God within us, the Holy Spirit of Pentecostal fire, life-giving breath of the church, spirit of healing and forgiveness source of resurrection and eternal life. Amen. And so Jenny Ford is now going to lead our intercessions for us. Let us pray. Dear Father, in these troubling times, let us remember you are our hope, our refuge, our protection. Thank you that even in the depth of our despair, you still continue to heap your gifts upon us. Let us look around this place where we live. Let us see and appreciate the beauty around us. Notice the bird song, not now drowned out by traffic. The stillness when we walk in solitude. Let us remember we can still smile and wave a greeting to those we pass, asking Jesus to bless them as we pass them by and that Jesus will meet them where they are without us knowing the details. We are God's messengers here on earth. 
We must listen and not judge. We must pray and not cease. Thank you, God, that you are in control as our world slowly opens up again. People return to work, children to school, shops and businesses reopening. And for those of us that have worked through the pandemic, we must welcome back normality, not fearing a second wave or grumble about the small things like the return of the traffic jams. We must all trust in the Lord. We pray for Leris and Rachel and the rest of the clergy as they work towards reopening for our churches for services. Guide everyone involved as decisions are made in the light of the world's new normal. We pray for understanding and patience for us, the congregations. Help us not to grumble, but embrace new ways of worship, fellowship and sharing God's love. Help us to take every advantage to reach out to our friends, family and community, meeting them where they are, showing them gently the love of God, the true way to happiness, contentment, peace and security in our troubled world. We do pray for those suffering ill health and sickness, for those that are on the long road to recovery, and also for those you have decided that need to be with you. We pray for all that mourn at this time and for those that comfort them. Lord, we praise you and acknowledge that you have won the victory over sin and death for all of mankind. And Father, we end by thanking you for all the bright things in our lives. Help us to see them, count them and remember them that our lives may flow in ceaseless praise to you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. It's been good to worship again together this morning and be challenged by scripture and by Derek's words to us. There are other challenges ahead as well as we begin to explore with the government and Church of England guidelines whether it might be possible uh, or indeed whether it is appropriate to start worshipping together over the next few weeks in some form or another. We are determined to include as many as possible. So whatever happens, um, there will hopefully be some sort of online worship um, Sunday by Sunday, um, but also Facebook Live continues during the week. Um, Derek and Leris will be leading that for the coming fortnight as I take uh, a summer break with Graham. The food bank continues to need our support as well as many people face challenges uh, in their own lives to put food on the table. So if you're able to please uh, look at the shortages list uh, at the end of the video and see if you can support the food bank in some way. And lastly, do join us on Zoom as normal for uh, fellowship at 11 o'clock uh, or around that time. Uh, it's always um, great fun, slightly chaotic um, at times. Um, We've had various pets join us. We've had various puppets join us. Um, I'm not sure what's going to be there this week. I'm sure you'll find something to surprise us with as you come along and join in that fellowship. We've learnt a lot about each other over the weeks in that way. So we do pray um, that God's grace will continue to fill our lives in the coming week and so in doing that 
we sing the traditional hymn, Amazing Grace. It is always good to share in God's blessing as we conclude our worship. We can go in peace to do what God wills, to follow where Christ calls and to pray for the gifts of the Spirit. And so may the blessing of God, the Creator, Redeemer and Sustainer, rest on and remain with you now and always. Amen. Go in the peace of Christ to love and serve the Lord. Amen. My Lord keeps me going